Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Random Pick with Weight. This is a really popular question, so let's make sure we actually know how to solve this. You are given a zero index array of positive integers w, where wi describes the weight of the ith index. You need to implement the function pick index, which randomly picks an index in the range 0 to length of w minus 1 inclusive and returns it. The probability of picking an index i is w at that index i divided by the sum of all the elements in w. For example, if w is 1, 3, that means index 0 has a weight of 1 and index 1 has a weight of 3. This means the probability of picking index 0 is going to be 1 over the sum of w, which is 4, and the probability of picking index 1 is going to be 3 over 4, or 75%. Example 1, we have our following input weight array, just 1, and it's the only element in there. So we're going to divide our weight by the sum of w, which is also just 1. 1 over 1 is 100%, so we're always going to return index 0, no matter how many times we call pick index. Example 2, again, it's the same thing we just went over, right? We have index 0 with a weight of 1 and index 1 with a weight of 3. So summing all of this together, we have a total weight of 4, meaning index 0 should be called with 1 fourth probability and index 1 should be called 3 fourths of the time. So every time we call pick index, we would return either index 1 or 0 based on those probabilities. If we call pick index 1, it could be 1 then call it again, we could also still return 1. Again, we could still return 1. Then on the fourth call, we should return 0 to keep it consistent with our weights. And remember, this is random, so it doesn't have to be in this order. It could have been 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. It doesn't matter. As long as we're maintaining the overall chances of each index respectively, we're good. And looking at our constraints, we have some pretty big numbers. The length of our weights could be 10 to the 4. Each weight could have a weight up to 10 to the 5. And we could be calling pick index up to 10 to the 4 times, so 10,000 times. So how do we solve this and how do we solve this efficiently? Taking a look at our original example 1 and 3, right? Index 1 had a weight of 1 and index 1 had a weight of 3. How do we actually assign these weights? The best way to do it is just to assign numbers to those indices. For example, we could use numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's four numbers in total. And for each number, assign an index. If, if we pick 1, we're going to map back to index 0. If we pick 2, 3, or 4, we're going to map back to index 1. This way, we have a weight of 1 fourth and 3 fourths. Visualizing this on a number line, we have numbers 1 through 4, and we're going to randomly pick a number within this inclusive range. Python takes care of the random picking for us. We're just going to be using randint. So getting a number 1, 2, 3, or 4, we want to see which index that number corresponds to. So if it's 1, it's going to be 0. 2, 3, 4 is all going to be 1. Now, let's take a look at our constraints again, right? We have a length of 10 to the 4. We could have 10 to the 4 numbers in our array. And each number could be up to 10 to the 5. So 10 to the 4 times 10 to the 5 is 10 to the 9. We would need a total of 10 to the 9 or 1 billion numbers in our number line to map to indices. Can we do it with less space? Yes, we can. Say this is my input of weights. Index 0 has a weight of 1, 1 has a weight of 200, 2 has a weight of 3, 3 has a weight of 1, and 4 has a weight of 2. What I'm going to do is instead of keeping every single number assigned to an index, I'm going to be using ranges. And I'm going to begin with index 0 to keep it consistent with Python's indexing. So 0 by itself is going to represent index 0. Now I have a weight of 200. So everything from 1 to 200 is going to represent index 1 meaning all I need to do is keep track of 200. This is going to be the ending of my index and set that to be one. Everything from one to 200 inclusive is index one. Now I have a weight of three. So adding three to this puts us at 203, meaning 201, 202, and 203 are going to point back to index two. Then I have a weight of one. So this is gonna put the range at 204 mapping back to index three. And finally, we're gonna have a weight of 2, so 205 and 206 are both going to map to 4, and we're only going to keep track of that endpoint. In this way, we're actually foregoing a lot of redundancy by saving space. We know everything from 1 to 200 maps to 1, so there's no need to actually have that physical mapping. But now, say we're picking a random number in our range from 0 to 206 inclusive, we go with 105. Because we don't really have a mapping, we don't know what index it now corresponds to. For that, all we need to do is perform a binary search on these numbers over here. We're looking for the smallest number we are less than equal to. 
So if I pick 105, for example, the smallest number I am less than equal to is going to be 200, and that's going to map back to index 1. So now that we know how to solve this, let's go ahead and code it up, and then we'll do a complete walkthrough with an example. All right, to code this up, we know we want to form a new list of ranges. So let's initialize that. Self.ranges is going to be a list. And as we iterate through our input of weights, we just want to keep track of the new ranges that we're going to form. So in the beginning, self.range is going to be negative 1. That means from index 0 onward is where we're going to begin our ranges. So for weight in w, self.range plus equals the weight that we have. And we're just going to add this range to our ranges list. So self.ranges.append self.range. Meaning if this was our input list over here, we had the weights of 1, 200, 3, 1, and 2. What would we do? We would have self.range being negative 1. Self.ranges would be empty and we'd be looping through. So for the first weight we come across, it's 1. We're adding that to our range, which puts us at 0. And we're going to append this to our ranges. So index 0 goes in here. We go back in our for loop. We're now at 200. Range plus 0 is going to be 200. We append this on over here meaning all the numbers greater than our previous weight and less than equal to 200 are now going to be index 1. We go back in our for loop. We have 3. We just add this on. Puts us at 203. We add a new range. Loop through. We're at 1. We're now at 204. Add a new range. And loop through one last time. We're at 2, which puts us at 206. And we have a new range of 206. So here we have that same mapping that we had over here. All we need to do now is just define our pick index. We're going to be picking a random index from the range 0 to 206 inclusive. So let's have a random number. It's going to equal random.rand int of 0. And the last number we have in our list, which is also actually stored in self.range, so we can go with that, self.range. Now we have a random number. All we want to do is a regular binary search. We've done this countless times. We know how to do it at this point. To reiterate, in case this is new for you, all we need to do for a binary search is start off with two pointers, left and right, and start off on the two ends of any sorted input. So in this case, we have a list. We are going to have left and right equals zero and length of self.ranges minus one, meaning left is going to be at index zero and right is going to be index four. What we want to do is keep searching up until left and right have converged on the same index. So while left is less than right, we want to find the midpoint. Mid is going to equal left plus right integer divided by 2. So we're going to wrap this in parentheses and integer divided by 2. In this case, 0 plus 4 is 4. The midpoint is going to be 2. And say in this scenario, the random number we had generated was 105. So we're looking for number 105. We're at this midpoint over here, 203. We just want to compare how this midpoint relates to what we're looking for. Accordingly, we'll shift in either pointer and search in a smaller half. Then we'll repeat the process until we converge. So far, we have a mid. Now we want to see how it relates to 105. So if self.ranges at this index of mid, so what we have in here, if this is less than the number we're looking for, so if this is less than random num, for example, instead of 203, this was 103. In that case, we know we are never going to be picking the index we're currently on with mid. We're looking for the smallest number that we are less than equal to. So it has to be greater than equal to our own number. If the number we're on is less than our number, we know we have to bring our left pointer in and search in a greater half. So if this was the case, we're going to move left up to be mid plus one. So mid plus one. Also, if that's not the case, if we're not less than the number we're looking for, it means we are greater than equal to it. So over here, 203 is greater than equal to 105. And so all we want to do is just move our right pointer in to mid. So right is going to equal mid exactly. And once left and right both converge, we just want to return what we have at that value. So we are going to return self.ranges of what we have in left or right, doesn't matter. So quickly, just running through this example, we had 105, our mid was index 2. We didn't go in this if, we're in this else. We know the number we have is greater than or equal to what we're looking for, which is 105. We're going to be moving right to mid. So right goes to index 2. And now we're just going to go back in this while loop because left is still less than right. Finding a new midpoint, 0 plus 2, integer dividing that by 2 puts us at 1. Mid is at index 1. We compare self.ranges of mid. This is 200. Is this less than random? No, it's not. So we're in this else again, and we move right in to be mid. So right is now index 1. Repeating the same process one last time, we figure out left plus right, integer divide that by 2. 0 plus 1 is 1. 
Dividing that by 2 puts us at 0 0.5, but remember this is integer division, so we round down, which means mid is at index 0. We make a check, self.ranges at mid, mid is index 0. What do we have here? We have 0. This is less than the random number, which means it can't be this index. Remember, we were only storing the endpoints of our ranges, so 0 marks the end of index 0 means the index that our number maps to has to be after this one, right? This is the endpoint for it. So we're going to move left up to be mid plus one. Left goes to index one, and we can no longer go in this while loop because left is no longer less than right. We've converged at index one just like we wanted to. 200 is the smallest number that 105 is less than equal to. And so we return index one. So this is how we solve it. Let's go ahead and submit. Wrong answer. Let's see what's happening. We should be returning 1110, one, one, but we're returning 33033. Three, 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 three. And that's because we're not actually returning what we should. We should be returning the actual index the number is mapped to. So we want to return 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, not the values at those indices. So let's go ahead and submit. And it is accepted. Now, talking about space and time complexity for space, if we have n numbers in our input w, we're going to be using that same amount of space. So our space is going to be O of N because we're just keeping track of all the end ranges for all the weights that we are given. And for time, it's going to be log of N because we're doing a binary search on those same weights. So it's going to be log of N. So we just went ahead and solved a random pick with weight. If you have any questions whatsoever, let me know down below in the comments. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.